My name is Jose Francisco. I'm 68 years old, a retired mechanical engineer. I used to be a very bitter man, very hateful, very arrogant. For a long time, I used to visit witchcraft centers, which made me into an even more hateful person. I had a huge hatred for people who I judged from a distance, especially towards those who attended the Universal Church and mainly against the leader of the church, Bishop Ejim Macedo. Uh-uh. I remember one day I was driving down Jean Gius Avenue with my friend, and as we were going to work, my friend stopped the car in front of a construction site. I didn't understand what he was doing. He stopped and asked, you know what this is here? I said, I don't know. A mall, a supermarket, a bus station. He said, no, it's that Macedo guy's church. I said, Macedo guy? Who's that Macedo guy? He said, Edgio Macedo. I said, you've got to be kidding. This church here belongs to this jerk. Sorry to use that word, but I called him a jerk. But I couldn't believe it. But he said, yeah, it's his church. Oh, yeah. Well, they better watch out because I'm going to implode this church. I'm going to blow this church to smithereens. And I had means to do that because I had access to explosives in my industry. I spent months driving by the church. I'd take a detour from going home to drive in front of the church, stop my car, look for some weak spot in security. If there was some opening for me to get in and place explosives there, but I never acquired them. Unfortunately, there was a time when a serious problem happened with my wife's health. That's when the ground just fell out from under my feet. My wife was feeling bad at home, and I immediately put her in the car, took her to the hospital so the doctor could see her. So the doctors did all the exams they needed to do. A neurologist came to see me too. She said, look, you're free to go home, but your wife is not going home today. I asked, why not? She said she's been admitted to ICU, she has a brain tumor, it's cancerous, and to be honest, we don't know if she'll make it through the day. At that moment, I, you know, I was in anguish. I didn't know what course to take, where to go. I didn't know what it was like to cry. I never had cried, but that night I cried. I cried in desperation. After that diagnosis, I remember I went back to the witchcraft center so they could cast a spell so that she could be healed. I remember I signed over a blank check and handed it to them so that they could do their work. I went home and laid down in bed. I kept waiting for sleep to come. At the moment, I cried out to God. I said, Lord, where could I find some medicine that I can place on my wife's head to heal her? Something I can give to her, something that can heal her. I laid back down and went to sleep. Next day, I still remember this until today. It was the municipal ordinance to rotate cars to reduce traffic. So I went to the parking garage to get one of my cars. As I got in and I was pulling out, the owner of the parking lot stopped me and said, Mr. Jimenez, I know your wife, Mrs. Yvette, is in the hospital and critical. I don't know what happened. But I've got here a little bottle of oil from Israel that my daughter brought from our church. If you'd like, you can spread it on your wife's head the next time you see her. I had no idea what that was, but I took it and I said, okay, thanks. I took the bottle, feeling a little angry, and put it in my pocket. I pulled out onto the street and right away came to a traffic light. The thought came, man, I asked God for some medicine I could put on my wife's head And he answered me. And as I pulled out my hand from my pocket, that little bottle popped out. And on it, I saw the logo of Universal. I picked it up and said, my God, with all the churches in this world, it has to be this one, the one I hate the most, the one that makes me the angriest. So I secretly took that bottle and spread the oil on her hand and on her head. The doctor came to talk to us and said, There were other people around, and he said, Look, there's something I need to tell you. She's not going to make it through the day. She's not going to make it. 
And once again, I felt the ground fall out from under my feet. And as I was leaving, a nurse called me over and spoke to me. I'm an assistant at Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. I thought to myself, my, my God. I used to want these people to die. I cursed them. I wanted to blow up that church. I wanted all of them to go to hell. And Lord, you put me in the path of someone from that church who wants to help me. So I left the hospital feeling a little more peace. She had told me what the doctor says is not all there is. I'll tell you why. The doctor just lost his own wife in an accident. And so he doesn't believe in anything anymore. But I believe that God is here and he's going to heal her. And I'm praying for her. On this day, I remember I had to go to the bank to get money to pay my employee. We had a maid that we paid every Friday. And I crossed the road. When I crossed the road, I saw the Universal Church and the pastor outside evangelizing. So I crossed and came up to him. I explained my problem, and he said that there was only one person in this world, one person that could help me, which was the Lord Jesus. When I left the church, I felt like a ton and a half, two tons had been lifted from my shoulders. I felt light. I remember I sat in my car. I had some saints in my car. I destroyed them all. I took off the one around my neck because I wore one and destroyed it and said, enough. It's finished, devil. My life doesn't belong to you anymore. I got home and there were saints at home. So many saints, one that was covered with precious stones, diamonds. I picked them all up in anger, took them to the parking lot where I kept my car and I threw them in the dumpster. I remember I'd go to church three or four times a day. I'd take my children to school. My wife was in a coma. I'd leave them at school, and then I'd go to church. One Wednesday, I was attending the cathedral, and the bishop in the meeting said, you who are here and want to give your life to God, to be baptized in water, do it today. I'd been in the church 10 days, 10 days. I said, Lord, if this is what you want, may your will be done in my life. I hadn't brought clothes, hadn't brought anything. I wasn't prepared, but he entered the water and came out a new person. On the 19th of July, 1999, they called and said, your wife is out of ICU. She woke up, she left ICU and is in a regular room. I stayed with her in that room for 20 days, and I prayed. I watched the church's programs. I learned to read the Bible, a Bible that was given to me, and I said, what am I going to do with this? The words began to feed me, along with the pastor's and bishop's words. And I began to determine things, and they started happening. After one or two weeks, she was sent home, and they said she wouldn't walk, but she walked. She wouldn't see, but she could. That she wouldn't speak, but she did. In fact, she started driving one month after leaving the hospital. And I took her to the church. And after one year, after being baptized in water, I went to the church, but the one in my neighborhood. But on the way home, in the car, driving, praying, worshiping, thanking God for that Sunday, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And 20 days later, she died. But I understand that all that was necessary for God to prepare me for this and to prepare my children too. I remember at her funeral, my aunts, her friends came and said, it's so strange, we came here to comfort you, but you're comforting us. I said, no, it's not me that's comforting you. It's the Holy Spirit. After I met the real God, it restored my entire life. It restored my health. It restored my body, my finances, my love life. Today I'm remarried, 
have a blessed life with my wife and children, my finances, because I'd hit rock bottom in my finances. I had no food, but today I have a house, a car. I have what I need, and I know what it is to love your neighbor. Loving your neighbor means giving your life for him. It means not denying the God you serve by not helping others. In first place, I'm grateful to the Holy Spirit for all he's done in my life and all that he will do. But also, I'm grateful to Bishop Macedo, leader of the Universal Church, because through this church, I found this beautiful and marvelous God, the love of my life, the one that I serve. <laughs>